So these are the practical examples. The first practical example is we're going to update a spatial table using ArcMap wow, okay. and FME. And then the next one is we're going to just QA some CAD data while we're importing. All right. So that means you're going to fire up ArcGIS now? We're going to, well, before we fire up ArcGIS, okay. we're going to shut down our, our FMEs. And we are going to make sure that um, FME yes. has the ability to extend ArcGIS. And what this means is that FME is actually available uh, within ArcGIS. So, so you can set up uh, connections through FME. Yes. You can actually, within ArcGIS, you can actually create workbenches and stuff, although we're not going to go into that today. But the first thing to do is make sure that the FME extension for ArcGIS is extended. So this is this thing called the FME Integration Console. You ran this app, and you're yeah. going to go hit that button. Yeah, so we hit the extend button. Now, I think this is this is extended by default on some installations. I think where you, your ArcGIS has a standalone license will we'll automatically do this if you're using off a license server. I think we don't. That's the, do something that. like that, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so, it's always good to double check. We know yep. that now you know that you're extended by FME. Yeah, so we'll close that and we'll fire up ArcMap. 10.1. Yes. But we extend earlier versions. Yeah, well. we extend before and after 10.1, but I'm not allowed to talk about what comes after 10.1. Oh, okay. You can probably guess, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's our, our ArcMap interface, for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, now, in the catalog, what we are going to do is... Oh, okay, well, let's delete that. Sorry, I should have deleted that before. We're going to add an FME connection. Yeah, pretend you didn't see what was yep. there. Yep. Didn't exist. So you're going to make an FME connection. Yeah, and we're going to add an FME connection, and we're going to hook up to Teradata. So this actually would work in older versions of ArcMap as well. Yep. This exact same thing. And we're going to load on our happy little city parks table. There we go. And we're going to go OK. And you're golden. Yeah, now we have a connection here. So now this is simply just drag and drop the connection in our ArcMap. And, and we have wow, our city parks. That's cool. However, notice on the side there we have four different data types. Yeah. Now what it is is that ArcMap only allows one yes. type of geometry per table, and Teradata allows multiple types of geometry in a table. So what, what the connection's automatically done is created a filter to 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 make different data sets yes. by the geometry. However, we don't need these. We know we only got polygons, so we're we're going to just get rid of these. Um, there we go, remove. So we just have the polygons. Now we want to edit these, but unfortunately, we're not allowed to edit a connection because this yes. is a read only. That's right, uh, FME only connection. supplies a read only connection, so I'm really curious what you're going to do now. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the data yeah. and we're going to export the data. Okay. And we're going to export the data into uh, a geodatabase. Okay, so the parks.gdb, actually, so we'll, we'll pick the parks table, Yeah. and we'll save. Would you like to overwrite it? Yes. Because I bet you did this before. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> rehearsals. <laughs> yes, so anyway, you're use, basically you're doing a translation inside of ArcGIS yeah. and um, using ArcGIS tools, although FME is in the background. Exactly, FME is the, is the, is the pipeline that, that moves yes. it from Teradata into ArcGIS. So the neat thing is, it's after it does the translation, do you want oh, to add yeah. the exported data to the map as a layer? Okay, let's that's say nice yes. ArcGIS. So now we have two sets of parks, but we don't need the connection anymore, so let's get rid of it. Right. You just use it to get a quick view, and now you're going to get rid of it. Exactly. So now we have a parks, and if we want to edit this one, hey, this one we can edit. So now we're ready to start editing. So what are you going to do? Well, let's do a couple of things. Let's zoom into a couple of parks here. First thing to do... Let's, uh, okay, do that in the right order. There we go. We're going to edit one of the attributes uh, on this park. So its alternative name is 52. I think it well, should be not that exciting. 42 Let's, is better. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. But what are you going to go with? I'm going to go Dave because <laughs> I always want to name something after myself. But then, yeah, okay. All right. So if we've, we've We've uh, changed the name of that, and if we bring up the editor again, we see, yep, it's Dave. Okay. Now this one, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to, let's just, we'd like, we're going to make the park bigger because we want more park space. Okay. 
So we're going to annoy <laughs> Too somebody. Too bad for those homeowners that are nearby. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Eminent domain, I think it's called. So we've made a couple of modifications here. And the next thing to do is we're going to save the, uh, we're going to stop editing and save my R edits. Okay. Now we can shut down the, uh, our, well, we'll leave it up and running just in case we'll look at it later. So now the next step is to run this, uh, the update workspace. Let me just bring that up. So you're going to do, you're going to do change detection? Yeah, we're going to do some change detection. Oh, wow. Okay. So now the first thing, now this, this uh, workspace is all set up to use whatever um, parks we we had uh, we had written it to, so the Teradata input is not, or the the geodatabase input is not really here. So we're going to add that quickly. You're going to go find wherever you saved your. Um... Yeah, and it happens to be right here. So we'll just grab the parks.gdb folder. Oops. Drag, drag and drop it onto in. here. And it comes up as Esri geodatabase file geodatabase API. Now this is the API that does not require ArcGIS to be installed to run. Yeah. But we have other Esri uh, APIs as well, but we'll just use this one quickly. Okay. And it comes up with the, the with the table that's in there. So we're going to hook this up to uh, the input there. So now we've got the parks input that we modified. We also have an input from the Teradata table, the, the original, original table. Yeah. Yep. Um, the first thing we do is we round, there's a coordinate rounder because when you move data between formats, sometimes coordinates can be modified slightly depending on the, the, the storage byte uh, level yes. and stuff they use. So I figure our data is accurate at best to the nearest millimeter, so we're going we're gonna to use a coordinate router to round to the nearest millimeter right. on this coordinate. Well, actually, this is in feet, so thousandths of a foot. So I think that's pretty Whoa. accurate. Yeah. Yeah. And that way, then we'll just make sure they match. The next thing we're going to use here is a change detector. Now, the change detector detects changes in both attributes and geometry. So yep. I'm going to set our, our geometry match to two dimensions. Leaning and geometry matching, that just means if it's reordered the polygon and put the vertices in a different order, we can live with that. Um, and then we're going to check the, uh, the name and alternative name to see if those have changed. Right. Then, uh, ones that have uh, the added is the... Um, revised data that is different than the original yes. is going to be the output here. Deleted is the original data that is different from the revised. Yes. So and the unchanged, we don't care. You're leaving that yellow because if it didn't change, we just do not care. Exactly. We, we just want to isolate the changes and, uh, and use those to update the database. Right. So the ones that are added now, you're going to do some tricky thing in there, I bet. What is yeah. that? Yeah. We're, there's, a, there's a special attribute you can use called FME underscore DB operation. Uh, Yep. that you can set to insert or, in this case, delete. Right. Now, when you're using FMEDB operation, the output the database has to have its mode set to uh, update. There's a writer mode, update and yes. insert and Got delete. It. So we'll set that to, to update. Which puts it in this mode where it's going to look for these instructions. Yeah, and then we just send it out to the table. So you're going to go, you're going to be so bold as to run that? We'll give her a shot. Now, I've also added a, a viewer here so you can view that the, the table as we're reading it before we did any So edits. I'm going to be interested in the numbers that appear in all those little lines. Um, is there a problem because we're viewing it somewhere? or? Um... Oh, yeah, sorry. Bye-bye ArcMap. Yeah, I wonder. ArcMap keeps that. its connections open. There we go. Seems faster. Okay, so we have our city parks. Now let's op add... You can also add a data set as well as open, and we're going to add the Teradata, the city parks, the modified ones. So there are the city parks after the changes have been applied. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is the original old one first? or Yeah, the purple is the old one that yeah. I brought up from the, I have just threw it out to the data inspector as I yes, added in. Yes, right, was the original data. Yeah, and then the data inspector there, and we'll read the table, and we'll look for, we'll take a look at the ones we changed. Now let's reorder drag guys up and down. Yeah, let's see. There we go. So you can see that the changes have been yep. applied to the database. Yep. And if we, uh, we turn that off, nope, if we turn this off, and now look at this one, info. it's now my park. Hey, good for you. Yeah, I've always wanted a park. Now I have one. All right. Okay, so proves it works, and there's all the numbers that tell us that um, there was two things to delete and uh, two things to add. Yeah, so that's, that's your basic change detection workspace.